Victoria Bailey is the executive director of the Theatre Development Fund. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's nice to be here. Uh, the Vict excuse me, the Victoria, I'm saying the Victoria <laughs> Development Fund. The <laughs> Theater Development Fund is, by the way, we know what your work is because we see it out there on the street. Outside. Um, the most famous is? The TKTS booth is what we're known for first and foremost, I think, is we run the half-price ticket booth in Duffy Square, and we run, and also there are satellite booths at South Street Seaport and Metro Tech in Brooklyn. So awesome. So that's the first thing everybody knows. But you're bigger than that. We're a lot bigger than that. We are an organization that is committed to building audiences for the theater, and we really work on two tracks. The first track is to make it possible for people to go to the theater who know they want to go, but there's a barrier. So whether it's an economic barrier, which is what the booth is about, we also have a membership program for people who live, primarily for people who live in the tri-state area and people who qualify become TDF members, and then they're eligible to purchase tickets at an even deeper discount. Hmm. Um, and then we also, we provide um, services for people with physical disabilities. Such as? So on the on the access, our accessibility project, we do sign interpreted and open caption performances. We were the first folks to do open caption performances on Broadway. We do audio described performances for the visually impaired. We have orchestra seats for folks with mobility problems. And then most recently, an initiative we started about a year and a half ago is our Autism Theater Initiative, where we work with producers to pre present shows, sensory-friendly shows, for children on the spectrum and their families. Can you give us a play? So, We're showing pictures as you're so talking we, about it, but explain how that would work. So the way that would work is we work with a producer. So we started with Lion King, um, and we have experts who experts on kids on the spectrum, and they go in, they watch the show, and they say, you know, we need to tweak this a little, maybe this sound cue. There are a lot of lighting issues. Um, we never bring the house all the way to black when we've got um, an, an autism-friendly performance, because transitions can be a challenge. So we, variety of tweaks in the show, and then we basically buy the house, and then we sell the house at a discounted price, or, and as well as for folks who can't afford tickets at all, we have a certain number of tickets that are discounted. and and it, what it really, what's really special about it and the essence of it is it's not just for the kids on the spectrum, it's for the kids and their families. What's that like for because them? Because it's, it's a gift, because especially going to the theater, it's really hard to take a kid on the spectrum to a performance that isn't a special performance, because you may be worried that your child is going to make noise, or they're going to get up, or they're going to have an attention issue, and people all around you, there's a kind of, Shh, you know, don't do that. So you don't and, go at all? So you don't go at all. And you're denied and that you're, opportunity? You're denied that opportunity. You're denied that opportunity as a family. And what's really moving is it's the child, it's their siblings, it's their parents, and they get a family outing what a fabulous that a lot thing. of us take for granted. Yeah, it's really... What a wonderful it's, thing. It's really... So you um, get to see those families. We get to see those the families. children with their parents, parents experiencing these extraordinary performances, but done in a way that, is, that is sensitive and empathetic and aware of the needs of the children who are on the that's autism right, on spectrum. The spectrum. And also done in a way where everyone in the theater is in the same boat. So, you know, if your kid maybe is having trouble and needs to get up, there's no one in the theater who doesn't understand that. And so it's a completely yeah. judgment-free environment. And of course, that's what the theater should be for everybody. How'd you get into this whole thing? Um, it started because... Uh, it was 1968 it started? A TDF? Yeah. TDF started in 1968. And when did you come into this whole thing? Um, I came into this whole thing about 12 years ago. I worked um, for many years here in New York at the Manhattan Theater Club. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, a, I was the general manager there. And it was time to try something new. And mm -hmm. um, when this came along, I thought... The thing, that's so, the thing that's so interesting about working for a service organization is we're working for the audience. And it, I, I went from being on the producing side. I really believe, TDF believes, that theater and dance are the birthright of every New Yorker and that we have to figure out ways to get people to the theater. We also have, we work with about 7,500 New York City school, high school and middle school students every year in the public school system, not just the theater. But we mean work with them. We have, we have a program called Stage Doors where the students um, working with their teacher and a teaching artist have four classroom sessions ahead of time. Is that part of, of what time. we're looking at right there? Uh, that would be Open Doors, which Open is doors our okay. mentoring program. We're a group of eight. We have 23 groups this year. Eight students from 23 different schools go to the theater six times a year with a mentor who's a performing arts professional. They go to the theater. They come back. They have pizza. They talk about it. They go back to their school. They write in their journals. And the idea is that we are training people wow. to be long-term, sustainable audience members. Um, it, it is a, it, theater is something you, you have to, 
You have to be exposed to Why it. Why do you do it at a young age? Why is it so important that they expo get exposed? Because at such it's a young the age? you, you want to get. I, I hate using. <laughs> I don't like using the language of addiction, but you want to get people in the habit of going to the theater, and you want to expose That's them. A good, hey, listen, as habits go, as it's habits a pretty go, darn good one. It's not one. a bad one, but you want to get them used to going to the theater. You want them to understand that it's a possibility for them. And I think, you know, more and more, um, it, you, we have to figure out how to take that experience of sitting in the theater and integrate it with a digital culture, right? It, you, you, you can't say we're not moving into a digital culture. We are. But you have to figure out there's still a place for that experience of being in the theater. You may want to tweet about it the minute you're done. You may, I mean, there's a whole lot of ways that two things can go together, but it's really important from an early age. We know that kids going to the theater or kids making theater, participating in the arts, really are great pred predicators of what's coming forward, what's going forward. Victoria Bailey is the executive director of a wonderful organization doing really important things for people who need this kind of help, the Theater Development Fund, because going to the theater and having that access is our birthright. It's our birthright. I love how you said it's that. It's our birthright. And just like public television should be our birthright, right. we have to support it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Great job.